This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. That is exactly right. This is a Morticast. Welcome, uh, everybody, to Morticast number 34. Uh, my name is Eki Gumbel. We are recording this on May 31st. And with me today is not Leon. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard his voice? This is uh, my good colleague, Thomas. Thomas Estas, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> Yeah, and thanks uh, for filling in for Leon, who is not at the office today. And uh, we, we thought we we're going to record nonetheless. Yeah. And uh, don't hold your breath next time. Hopefully, Leon will be back. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, and of course, next week is Morticon Week. So, Mordic Conference Global coming up, uh, the online event, uh, two days, June 8th through 9th, and a bucket load of good talks and good stuff and so we thought we will talk about that in our interview part uh, and I'll, I'll interview Madeleine Friedrich who is another colleague of ours yeah. and um, she's also responsible for the creation of the, the talk or the schedule mm -hmm. for this Mordic conference so mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask her about this uh, the making of this whole event yeah but before we jump into that Uh, we already talked about the new Mautic version for the 3.0, I guess, but there is a new version which was released just the same day or some days after uh, for the 3.1, which has some security fixes, so you should check your installation and do some updates. Yeah, exactly right. This, there were some security fixes in the 4.3 version, uh, and another one popped up just a second when when it got released so i think this was the quickest update <laughs> quick patch release ever yeah there you go 4.3.1 don't don't waste your time but but uh go directly to it uh, don't don't lose any time go and and upgrade to that version directly yeah uh There are some nice features in the 4.3 version. One of them is nicer contact detail view. For example, empty fields are hidden now. Yeah, yeah. in, in general, the, the, the contact view uh, has always been pretty cluttered and it, it's much cleaner, much more convenient now. So, and that's just one of many user-facing fa user details that have been improved. There are also developer-facing improvements uh quite quite significant ones but there are two major things for users as well one that i like a lot is uh, about dynamic content filtering where we all know this feature that you can uh, create a, a text block and and show that conditionally so if this is true then show this and and else show that um And this has now been uh, opened up to plugins, so it's not just more core things that, that are in, in consideration here, but, but also plugins, and that makes it even more powerful, and I really love that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is even bigger, um, and I wished it had been there before, because it, it covers something that comes up time and again in every second project. We have that, that we need some other sort of table or objects or whatever so not only customers and companies but also products or subscriptions or invoices or purchases or, or whatever it may be maybe even completely completely different items it has been a, it has been possible to code that into modic always um, but now there's uh, the option to just create that through the back end and, and uh, come up with your own tables and and um, include that in filtering all that um and that is fantastic it is a little bit out of blue sky um but not from zero because it is a feature that acquia has had for quite a while as a private feature and they now released it to the public and so thank you very much to our friends at acquia for this fantastic feature Hi, this is Eki speaking to you from the future. After recording this podcast, uh, we tried the custom objects for the first time our, ourselves, and it turns out that it 
does not come pre-installed. Uh, it is just possible to install this with, with Mordic 4.3. So what we did is compile a little how-to, which we didn't find online. And uh, the link is, of course, in the show notes as well. By the way, we did try it. It works like charm. It's really, really lovely. Right. Uh, let's jump into some plugins we had a look at. Uh, and I'll start with Twilio. Uh, it is always been, it's always been possible to send SMS via Twilio plugin. Now we got the feature that we can read SMS and react on content in the SMS. For example, if I got back an SMS unsubscribe, then I can do something with that information. Yeah, which is a really good step forward. Let's say a separate uh, piece of software, a separate, separate repository on, on GitHub, technically speaking. It's called Mordic SMS Reader. And like everything else, we link to that on the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, and you find the show notes, by the way, on mordicast.com slash 34. That is a secret short link to every episode's uh, show notes page, just mordicast.com slash number of the episode. There you go. Um, there's there's more uh, code and another thing that we picked is called the Universal Chat Plugin by a company named ExpertFlow in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and they have a product called Hybrid Chat. Um, and Hybrid Chat by itself is a pretty is interesting animal because it is not just a web chat, not just a chatbot. It also integrates all the other things like. Uh, WhatsApp or Facebook, Facebook Messenger yeah. or Twitter into the the experience, and um, that's why it's called hybrid, obviously. And uh, they now integrated that into Mordic or attached that into Mordic, and now you can uh, connect Mordic to a chat experience across these channels if you like. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a well documented thing. We will link to it also in the show notes. But I think it's so interesting that I would like to get somebody from Expert, Expert Flow on the show maybe next time or the, yeah. the time after for an interview and explain us more about it, about the use cases, etc. Chat is, of course, a thing that pops up time and again. There are some existing integrations. Um, some other have their private integrations with other chat products because there are so many products out there. Um, I stumbled upon a feature request that says, hey, let's create a generic channel, channel called chat in Mordic, mm -hmm. and maybe let's uh, come up with Mordic's own, own chat system, chat software. I don't think Mordic should do that. There's just too many options out there, yeah. and it's, it's a completely different domain. But maybe having a, like, like a generic chat interface or, or mm -hmm. construction set or whatever, yeah. Um, might be a good idea. So the, this discussion is certainly ongoing. Uh, so do have a look in the feature request channels in our forums. True. Yeah. Then uh, all the plugins from the company Lead Engine are now available for Mautic 4. Uh, I think the most famous one is custom audiences for Facebook ads. Yeah, true. And, and they, they also say they have uh, various improvements. So, so additional features to their, their plugins. But uh, they have been behind for quite a while. And, and very frankly, that has been hindering ourselves mm -hmm. as well. I always wanted to look at the Firebird plugin, mm -hmm. but we never could because, because it was still in, in some uh, older versions of Mordic. Now it's all uh, up to date and even improved and refurbished. And that's, of course, really good stuff. Uh, so thumbs up to our friends in Hungary. Yeah. Little side note. Um, interesting thing that they did they now have a version numbering that is uh in line with the modic uh, major versions so if there's a plugin version 4 we know this is now for modic version 4 um that that solves a problem that we always had and i think everybody has because you never know this plugin what is it, what modic version is this compatible with mm -hmm. and so um there are some some details that you need to think about if you go this, this way but in general i think it's an interesting solution and we strongly consider uh changing our own versioning system to the same approach so well if you have any feedback on that do 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 tell yeah 
Next and last news from our plugins chapter N8N. We talked about their services uh, in some Modicast episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, they changed their license model. And as far as we can tell, uh, this could be bad for hosters. So you should check if you're hosting uh, N8N on your site um, if you're affected or not. Yeah, in general, as, as I or as, as I took it from our conversation in, in the NADA in interview here, um, a SaaS provider who would bundle N8N with their product, mm -hmm. had, it was always in a situation where they had to go, go to paid license. Yeah. Whereas if you're just a hoster and, and if your client tells you to provide to install N8N for them, then you are just a service provider and you're not affected. Nobody has to pay anything for mm -hmm. that. Uh, now they changed their license model. And even if you're just a hoster um, and install it for the, them, um, you are already affected by this and have to pay. Yeah. Um, I really don't understand the details and it, it, it does not really affect us. Um, but if you are a hoster, as, as Thomas just said, um, Yeah, at least take a closer look and may well be that you are affected. And maybe this is also not a, a finished discussion and, and I guess I, I would like to reach out to N8N and um, have them give us a little back, background for yeah. the podcast here. Right. Uh, let's jump to some tutorials we found, both from Joey Keller. Uh, the first tutorial we picked is a really in-depth full guide to file permissions and caching. What's under the hood? How it, how is it working? So if you want to have a deeper knowledge on that, uh, it would be a good read, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, that applies to people who are on the command line right. and then <laughs> want to understand what's going on and uh, what can go wrong also and, and why this is fix, fixing their problem, etc. Yeah. So do, understand, do make sure to understand the, the backgrounds. If you don't already, this is perfect guide for you. The other thing is more user-facing, and it's about time-based campaigns, also from Joey. Um, and time-based campaigns, there's a lot of variety on that, and um, this is like comprehensive <laughs> coverage of, of them all, from birthday campaign to webinar invitation, etc., with all the challenges, solutions, or workarounds, or maybe even open open points. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with time-based campaigns with Mordic, that's the title. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so let's let's go on and talk about Mordic Conference, which is just around the corner. Um, as I said previously, I asked Madeleine, who is another colleague of ours, uh, to tell us a little bit about the making of, and here we go. Yeah, I'm very happy to welcome a very special guest on this show today, and that is my uh, colleague Madeleine. Hello, Madeleine. How are you doing today? Hi, Eki. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am happy to be here today. It's my first podcast ever, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I was going to say good to see you, but if we see each other almost every day, <laughs> but I still like that. Um, yeah, the thing we want to talk about is basically... Mordic Conference Global and specifically the program of this Mordic Conference that is just around the corner. Um, the reason the reason I ask you as a guest on the show to tell us about it is the fact that you are kind of responsible for the program and um, at the same time obviously you are with Leuchtfeuer as Leon and I are as well. So therefore maybe For those who don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about your personal background and your professional life and all that. Yeah. Um, so I am with Leuchtfeuer for over a year now. I started last year um, working with Mortic and Leuchtfeuer um, when I wrote my master thesis. We had the topic um, about omni-channel marketing. So we searched for as many possibilities as possible to connect with Mortic. Um, we ended up doing that in a hotel. Um, so I got a pretty deep 
insight into Mautic and how to use it and what is possible with it. And that's why I decided to stay with Leuchtfeuer after my master thesis. So in October last year, I started um, working with Eki and Leon on our customer projects with Mautic. And yeah, in my free time, what am I doing in my free time? I do some sports. I like to be in the nature and When I am not working, I also like to travel a lot, especially far away, um, for example, to South America or Asia. Hmm. Okay, next uh, podcast in Spanish, right? Oh, Portuguese. Okay, okay. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool. Uh, and, um, yeah, maybe one day we'll publish this nice video that you made for your master thesis with the multi-channel connections into other worlds out of Mordic. Yeah, teaser, teaser, spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> okay, okay. But nonetheless, as I already said, for Morticon, your role is very specific this time. Tell us about that. I know last time you uh, did a track lead for one or two tracks. I don't even know. So what are you doing this time? At the last Mautic Conference Global, so one year ago, I was a track lead. And I already thought the event is really interesting. So in November, um, I had a talk with Eki together in Belgium at the conference. And this time I thought, okay, I want to be part of the group who's organizing this event. So I got in touch with you, Eki and Ruth, to see what what tasks can be done or where people are needed. Yeah, right. At the time we had a call for helping hands basically yeah. we wanted to spread the workload across way more people than we did at the previous conferences and yeah luckily you showed up for <laughs> for the uh get to for the, for the kickoff event and uh, it turned out you ended up with the program role yep. right yeah exactly because i thought it's a very cool um task and you have a lot of responsibility for the event And I think, um, yeah, we have a really, really good program for next week. Yeah, before we go there, tell us a little bit about the behind the scenes. So how, how does it work? What, what are those responsibilities and how, how, what, what does it take to, to put together a, such a huge uh, schedule as we have with way over 50 talks and everything? Yeah, so basically everything starts with a call for speakers. So we want to attract as many people as possible um, to submit their sessions with a wide variety of topics from technical topics to strategical topics and also, of course, in different languages. So we spread this um, in social media, email, blog posts, etc. And then we, yeah, we received... Um, some pretty good submissions and then we put together a team to review these sessions so get an overview um, about the talks we got about the languages they are in and then started to put them in a schedule uh, which is not easy because we have talks from around the world so different time zones and then we want to We want to have them in the international room, if you can say it like this. Oh, you mean in, in other languages uh, than, than English? Yeah, exactly. So we encourage people to submit their talks um, in their native language. For mm -hmm. example, if they don't feel so comfortable in English or if they want to reach their local community. Yeah, like Portuguese, Portuguese. Japanese. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this year we only have, well, only, um, but we have German and Japanese. Okay, and I, I do know that uh, we are organize the, those talks that we have in multiple tracks uh, or multiple rooms, whatever. And there's one room specifically for the international talks on day two, I guess. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about a little bit about those talks that were submitted. I mean, it's not like we accepted everything. I was part of the team that you mentioned to, for reviewing the the submissions. And there are always some submissions that are not really Mordic related. Some people just want to talk wherever they can. 
uh, it's not like we require a direct relationship to, to Mordic, but but it has to have some value to to the audiences. Um, so, um, are there any specific talks that you want to bring up that caught your eye personally? Yeah, of course. So, I think the first day, um, very interesting talk is from Tune the Geist. If I pronounce it oh, right. Sorry for butchering. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep his name with Tune. <laughs> yeah. um, he'll talk about strategy, um, like how to fit um, your marketing automation into your general marketing strategy. And I think that's a topic, yeah, which is really important for everyone who's working with marketing automation. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact that we have a lot of uh, user-oriented uh, talks once yeah, again. It's, it's a really good mix, and that was also the, the tagline of the event. So you see that also at the, the keynote by Jan Capstraw, wh who's uh, speaking about re-engagement strategies, uh, which is definitely one of the big deals for all Mordic users on the strategy side. So, but But we do have technical talks, don't we? Yeah, of course. So we also have talks related to GDPR and tracking. So for example, on the second day, Alexander Hammerschmidt is talking about why tracking is dead and content is king. I'm really excited for this talk. Yeah, it's going to be a good show by Alex, like yeah, always. <laughs> like always. Yeah. Um, but we also have another talk about GDPR from a real lawyer. So I'm also interested what he is going to tell us mm. about GDPR. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing that I will definitely um, listen to, watch, and maybe uh, ask questions <laughs> is, is by, by Michael, Michael Wollman, that was also a friend of the show. Um, he's speaking about more preparing that for enterprise and all the problems mm -hmm. that that may involve. That's on Wednesday as well. Yep. And then on Thursday, I'm really looking forward to the discussion we're going to see from you, Joey, Ruth, Deborah, I think. Um, you will talk or discuss um, about the contributors' experience in the Mautic project. I'm really excited what you're going to say or what your different opinions are. Um, yeah, it's one of the focus topics for the entire year that we really want to uh, improve the, the, the contributors' experiences. And whenever you talk to people, they come up with new ideas. So we thought it's a good idea to have a panel yeah, on of that. Course. Yeah. Um, as we already mentioned, we, we have multiple lang or, or native language tracks, specifically German and Japanese this year. And there's one good one that I want to point out in the German language track or German language listeners, um, that's called Wie du den Vertrieb in die Marketing Automation einbeziehst by Norbert Schuster. So that's about uh, involving the sales team in the, uh, in the marketing automation process. Definitely a very important topic that comes up frequently, but is rarely uh, tackled in depth. And uh, we will have the recording of that and uh, including a translation with subtitles. So that may even be interesting to the rest of the world as well. Yep. And for those who do not want or do not have that much time, they can also listen to the lightning talks. They are five to ten minutes each. And I think there are also some really good talks um, like Double Up in Process in 2022 or Birthday Campaign. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a really good tip. It's at the end of day two, I guess. Yeah. And it's just, just quick on-point things, those lightning talks. And it's good that we have a good number of those this time. Um, and of course, there's a little talk by you, not uh, in, in German and in English. Is that right? What's, what's the title of that? Um, I will talk about campaigns and segments in Mautic because we all know that there are some pitfalls when you work with these nice tools in Mautic. Um, like, for example, if you remove a contact from a segment and you just don't understand why they are not coming back to your segment or why they are not getting your latest nurture emails. So I'll try to summarize the most important facts in this talk. Okay, so the real in-depth hard facts yeah. about inner workings of segments and campaigns. 
And I have to admit, I, I know some of the content, but not all of it. And it's always good to, to really uh, do the research to, <laughs> to the real, yeah. real end of, of those things that you need every day. Um, one th thing that I want to mention is that we switched to Amid this year. So what, what does that mean for the users, the attendees? I think for attendees, it's a really nice experience. You have everything at a glance. There's also the possibility to join tables where you can talk to people or discuss about previous talks. But I also think that for um, speakers or track leads, the experience is very nice. It's super easy and comfortable to start your session or, um, or to talk to your track lead before your session starts you can have a chat with them it's very very nice and i hope we have a great event next week well, i'm sure we will <laughs> okay so nonetheless if you had like like three wishes three uh, for for next time is there anything that you would hope for uh, or that would change or that you would wish uh, to to go differently next time Three wishes. So um, one wish is that it would be really great if more people would join the working group, the working group that is organizing the whole conference. Um, because again, this year, I think it was already on more shoulders, of course. Oh, yeah. But again, it is a lot of work, and I think it would be super helpful if more people would jump in. Also for smaller tasks like track leads, um, but also for bigger parts like reviewing the program or something like this. And when we're talking about the program, another wish would be um, more submissions in foreign languages again. Mm, yeah. So this year we have a German and the Japanese track. And um, yeah, but we did not have enough submissions in other languages to have a track in those languages because we always say we need to have two or three talks in that language in order to have a track and yeah that would be really great to see other languages again i think that's pretty much it okay fair enough and um yeah for now uh, thank you so much for the work that you're putting into this event i'm pretty sure it, i mean we are almost there we have everything together um so it's Gonna be awesome. Yeah, if I'm you, excited. If, if you out there have not yet clicked your ticket, go there, go there now and don't miss out. It's a early bird is over by now, but it's still dirt cheap to to attend this event. Uh, so by all means, go there and be part of the event, be part of the discussion, etc. And um, yeah, be be more active in the modern community if you can. Okay. Thank you, Madeleine. Uh, thank yep. you so much. Uh, thank you I'll for you having go. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do this again. <laughs> yep, okay. Why not? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I really love the contribution by Madeleine here. I think it's really a good thing to contribute in open source projects. This is what open source projects makes tick. This is the DNA of open source projects. So, uh, thumbs ups to Madeleine once again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And. Um, It's it's not just DNA, frankly. It's it's also sort of a business approach um, that that everybody who is using an open source product for their business should really consider is to to be part of the project and not not just just a leech or or ju just a passive yeah. consumer mm -hmm. uh, because it just brings you much much closer to the product and to the community and and to the features and and all that. Okay. Um, Yeah, speaking of contribution, uh, we have two new uh, Community Spotlight articles on the Modic blog that I'd like to mention. Uh, one is about Dennis Ameling, mm -hmm. friend of the show, and then the other is about Miro Fedeles in, in Hungary. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put both links in show notes as well. And uh, yeah, thanks to you guys too. Yeah, jumping back and forth, <laughs> back to... <laughs> Uh, events once again uh, there was an event the Mautic Developer Days which were a great success yeah um, I did not attend uh, but but Ruth told me about it mm -hmm. and, and also she, she wrote up a blog post about why she liked it a lot and why she liked the environment as well and what she took from the 
developer day. So yeah, blog post in the show notes. Yeah. Then you were on vacation. No, you were uh, on vacation. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but you had a little travel. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the other Mordic event that was significant uh, was the Mordic Sprint in Budapest earlier this month, where, uh, I don't know, 15 people or so got together for three full days. Mm -hmm. So actually, we arrived on Saturday or Sunday, and then had Monday through Wednesday full days for for just Mordic sprinting mm -hmm. and getting a ton of things done and that, that was not just developers we also had developers but it was also all the other teams like community team marketing and um, education mm -hmm. we did have some some online um, contributors but the energy that we had on site once again was was mind-blowing and and it feels like we did things done that we would not have had uh, gotten done oh, <laughs> uh, in in three months otherwise yeah, yeah. so it's, it's inc incredibly incredibly valuable in terms of outcome but also in terms of uh, getting to know new people uh, seeing old friends and uh, big thanks to once again to joey who mm -hmm. was in charge of uh, organizing the things uh, locally Obviously, he came up with the idea to do this in Budapest, and uh, most people were surprised uh, what what a wonderful city that is because oh. they never went to Budapest. Yeah, and everybody said, oh, "Okay, gotta get back here." Yeah. So yeah. So if you are looking for a nice city travel, Budapest is certainly worth it. If you're looking for a nice Mautic, uh sort of a contribution event, look out for the next sprint. That's a unbeatable thing. Yeah. And we have a little big news. Uh, Mautic, uh, as a project, was once again accepted for Google's season of docs. Yeah, once again, we, we oh, I don't know, two years ago, I or guess, maybe yeah. three years ago, mm. uh, we had the same opportunity already. And at the time, we had two new writers where Favor is still on board, even as a team lead today. Cool. So uh, big su success at the time. And... Surely it's going to be very valuable once again. Um, I don't want to have too high hopes, but if we find really good people, um, that might maybe even better for Mordic. Yeah, but uh, yeah, thumbs up to to those who made this possible. Yeah. And I I'm very curious to see what what who comes on board and what they're going to do and achieve. Yeah, and then of course we cannot finish this episode with, without coming back. Jumping back and forth <laughs> to Mordic Conference. If you don't yet have your ticket, by all means, go to Mordicondo at Mordic.org and get your ticket. It's dirt cheap. I mean, early bird is over. That was five bucks. We are now uh, at 20 bucks. Still a bargain. Yeah. Yeah. The exact, exact thing is uh, pay what you want uh, 20 bucks or more. So we have many people who pay 100 bucks. Uh, whatever. Um, Even for 20 bucks, uh, it's it's just a buckload of of uh, no a truckload <laughs> uh, of of uh, excellent talks on on all levels and um, yeah it's eight days from now we're probably not going to publish today so it's it's just a handful of days around the corner around the corner uh, yeah see you there I hope <laughs> good other than that. Um, Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate all your feedback. Uh, you know that or you will find all the channels that we cover. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to hear from you. And of course, uh, looking forward to the next episode. Uh, be back for you then. Take care. Until then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.